Welcome back, everyone. Look, I get it. If you only know what you see on TV every day, it looks like your fellow black Americans are under attack by racist whites. Believe me, if I thought for one second this was actually true, I'd be standing side by side with the protesters. I have no hate for black people. I grew up looking up to and idolizing many of them. But there's just so many reasons for me to doubt the systemic racism narrative. Which is why I'm so concerned about this letter I just received from the superintendent of my kid's school. Apparently, they're just gonna adopt the far left anti a view of our society despite what the hard data tells us from the letter i have done a lot of thinking and contemplating about the events that have taken place in america since the tragic deaths of george floyd brianna taylor and ahmaud aubrey i can't stop thinking about these individuals their families their friends and their communities i truly hurt for them i have had many different thoughts and feelings i usually keep my opinions to myself but i feel the need to speak up i'll be the first to tell you that i did not fully understand what systemic racism was until i started doing my own research and listening to others okay look Death is always tragic, but how many black people died in Chicago over the weekend? Did you feel bad about them or their families? Not likely because it wasn't a national news story. Or how about when white people died in a similar fashion at the hands of police? Did you care about them or their families? Not likely because you probably never heard of it because the news never reported it. Sorry about the interruption, but give me 30 seconds to tell you about this special offer for my subscribers. Don't just wait and hope that things are going to work out. Be proactive and make sure that you and your family won't have to worry about food shortages. And I trust and use my Patriot Supply. You can too. Take action so you're ready for what's coming and save $70. Those that know what's coming are preparing. Go to preparewithdronetech.com. Anyway, back to the letter. When I read a letter from my colleague about his fears of how this country feels about him and his family because of the color of their skin and wonders if our country or system is designed to protect them, it hit me hard. Reflecting on his reality and the senseless death in the last few weeks, I have realized it is time to wake up and understand what is and has been going on in America. I will not pretend to have the answers, but we can no longer hide from the fact that systemic racism is real and having a negative impact on our society. We must do a better job of listening, educating, and becoming aware of the issues and act against racism. There is no simple answer and it will take time for change to occur, but the sooner we start the conversations, no matter how challenging, the quicker change will start to occur. If America is to continue to be the greatest country in the world, then we must all ensure that all people are treated equally. You live in a country of 328 million people. You saw a news story about three people dead and that made you believe that systemic racism is real. And it's no wonder that your colleague has these fears because that's the fear mongering that our media is pumping out. You say you want to educate your yourself and become aware of the issues, but apparently you don't know anything about any of the hard data, and my guess is that if it was presented to you, you would just dismiss it. Look, this all sounds well and good, but you gotta be worried about a superintendent who doesn't really seem to have all the facts or a grasp on this whole situation, but is declaring that systemic racism is real, but then claiming to wanna have a conversation. My guess is that any conversation will be all from one side while the other side is shut out as being racist. Do you understand what a conversation is? It sounds like you've already made up your mind, so any conversation would be futile. Do they not understand that by doing that, they're basically declaring that people of a certain skin color are guilty by default. There's plenty of data out there to the contrary that's being completely ignored. You're claiming that black people are under assault by white people, but the fact is the black on black murder rate is actually the highest rate of interracial murder in this country. And the fact is that while black men are overrepresented in police arrests, they're also overrepresented in violent crime and murder. And this is all backed up not only by FBI arrest stats, but by victims survey of black victims. Another factor they're ignoring is that it seems to be mostly men targeted by the police. Is this because the system is systemically sexist or is it because men are mostly the ones committing violent crime and murder? I sent the superintendent a response and here's some of that. Actually, there's plenty to argue about on this topic. There are many other factors at play that are being ignored for the purposes of pushing a political narrative. The media purposely ignores stories that don't fit that narrative while amplifying ones that do. I'm worried that by putting out this statement, the school is adopting what is essentially a far left ideological view of our society. Part of that ideology is broadly judging and generalizing white people as a threat to non-whites. It sounds like you're adopting that vision. It's a vision that is simply not backed up by the hard data. 
For example, there have been similar situations with white people being choked out to death, shot while unarmed, and killed with knees on their necks, but it was never a national news story. Based on the raw numbers, it actually happens more to white people, which suggests there is not racial targeting. I assume that you're familiar with the Stanford experiments. They suggest that people in positions of authority will inevitably become corrupt, and it has nothing to do with race. There is clearly an issue with police brutality and general ignorance of constitutional rights, but there's no hard evidence that the entire system or a majority of the police are racist or that it's specifically targeting black Americans. I then go about talking about the crime stats and how these stats might show another reason why there's negative interactions with the police that don't have anything to do with race. I'm only citing this to show you that there are other factors at play here that are being ignored in place of pushing a political narrative of systemic racism. This is not an excuse for police brutality or so-called over-policing, but it does provide context. It bothers me that we're not really allowed to talk about these topics honestly with the actual data. A narrative is being pushed through with strong arm tactics, despite there being plenty of data to have a conversation about. Schools should be a place to discuss these things open and honestly, but it appears that you're just acquiescing to regurgitating rhetoric. Black lives definitely matter, but let's look at the full picture openly and honestly. Let's not broadly and unfairly judge this situation. There's clearly data that you're not considering for whatever reason. My concern is that you're actually going to start judging students and accusing them of being responsible for things they are not responsible for purely based on their skin color. And of course, I provided plenty of sources to back up everything I was saying, but still, I'm concerned about the response my email might have. And the fact that I even have to worry about that in the first place. This is frightening to me because school should be a place of learning, discovery, discussion, research, but instead, they're quickly looking more and more like far left free education camps. Once you adopt this ideology you're gonna have to follow it to its conclusion and this ideology has a clear enemy and that's white people can my child even get an actual education there anymore will she be indoctrinated to hate herself and other whites as she's turned into a red revolution ally what's gonna happen as non-white students are given more and more justification to have pure hatred for their white classmates I just don't see this ending well and if I were you I would see if your schools are gonna be adopting these same far left views of our society that's all for this episode please hit that like button share and subscribe I really need all your support if you'd like to support this channel further you can do so on one of these platforms you can find all the links in the description or pinned comment. Thanks for watching. Keep coming back.